What up, and welcome back to another episode of Creeps of the Crypt. I'm your host, John, along with my co-host... Brother Alan. What up, guys? That's right, and we're here to talk about a episode that was the start of this entire podcast. If it wasn't for a conversation and me mentioning this episode, an episode that was... Uh, that at the time, and still, I think I watched it a few times, and then today I watched it. Again, or yesterday I watched it again, and I felt a little different because I was trying to, like, I don't know. Anyway, I'll talk about that when we talk about the episode, but, like, yeah, I loved this episode yeah, yeah. when I was a kid. This was my favorite episode growing up, like, really, like, the best ever. So... I, this is near and dear to my heart, so I think it's still going to elevate my rating a little higher than usual. But I, I, but I did pick up on some things re- recently rewatching it that I didn't really like. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting to get into. I know um, that was that be really was the the birth the birth of the podcast was through this episode you talked about and got me interested in checking it out. And then you know that's kind of you know where things started. So yeah, we'll definitely. Uh, get into it and see what what was the things that stood out to you when we get there anyway so this episode is titled the secret and it is the last episode of season three and uh it is directed by j michael riva and doug roning and doug roning i was like oh wow i wonder what he's done after this because i like this episode and he's done nothing i don't know if these are actually really people's like real people or a writer didn't want to put their name on it for some reason you know it's possible, but we see a lot of these kind of uh, no-name writers that don't do a whole lot. I mean, this is the first time I've seen this guy's name on on anything he's written, Tales from the Crypt-wise, and that's like the only thing that's on his IMDb. Yeah, uh, just other, nothing I mean, else. Other people got some other, other like, uh, you know, PA assistant roles, uh, production designer roles, but this guy's got nothing besides this episode. Mm-hmm. And then uh, J. Michael Riva is mostly known for being a production designer. He's worked on uh, a lot of films like uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, Django, Iron Man, uh, a bunch of different things. And uh, he passed away in 2012, and, but he directed this episode. So rest in peace, Mr. Riva. He also was a production designer on uh, Spider-Man 3 and uh, Zathor- uh, Zathura? You know that that um, yeah. I've never seen that movie. That's the. Um, I yeah, I know of it. It's, it's um, James James that, uh, John Favreau had that one kid from uh, yeah, that one kid from Hunger Games in it. I didn't watch the Hunger Games either, and people are gonna Kristen, go and Kristen Stewart, right? I don't know. Was Kristen Stewart? Yes, Kristen Stewart was in it. I think. Yeah, she was. Oh, and the she classic, was not in the Hunger uh, Games. The no? company Orlando uh, Orlando Jones uh, Evolution. I don't think Josh Hutchinson was in the Hunger Games. Was he in the first one? Mm, yeah, he was in it. Oh, he's in all of them. Oh shit! Look at that. I didn't even know that. So I don't watch that because to me, I know it's based on a book, but I'm like, when I heard about it and I saw what the premise was, I'm like, oh, that's like Royal Rumble. Oh no, Battle Royale. Well, say. It, that's like Battle, Battle Royale. Royale or a Running Man. Yeah. So I'd rather I'm, watch yeah, Running Man yeah. with Arnold. Battle Royale is really good. The first two. Oh, there's only. I think there's only two. But anyway, yeah. So uh, rest in peace, Doug Roan. I mean, um, J. Michael River. So um, this episode, like I said, we, or I was. Uh, it's based off the comic, and the comic is actually exactly, pretty much exactly like uh, the episode, except there is no um, Butler. There's no Tobias. Yes, there's no Tobias. So uh, why don't you tell us what this episode is about, pretty much. Sum it up for us. Give us a lowdown. The lowdown. Yeah, and uh, the episode stars, um, yeah, Larry Drake, who we uh, mentioned plays Tobias, which um, it's about a young orphan uh, named Theodore. He gets adopted by these, um, well, I guess they call them uh, eccentric uh, rich people, uh, the Colberts. Um, and then, you know, we find out later on that they're, they're, they both got a secret. Um, that's why it's titled The Secret. Yeah, that was pretty brief. <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> I will say the episode opens up and it says um, the orphanage's name. And it says Gaines Orphanage. And I thought that was nice. They're paying homage that to... That was a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. William M. Games. And uh, the episode starts out with uh, Teddy... Our lead character, who's like about 13 years old, was supposed to be 13, but he seems a little, maybe a little younger. And uh, 
he's listening to the headmistress or headmaster, uh, Mrs. Hagstead. I like how they put her name Hagstead because in the comic it wasn't those weren't the names. It was like, uh, well, Miss Heather's Miss, in the comic. Missy, I forgot Miss, what her Miss name. Gray, Miss Miss Graves and Miss yes. Heather. So they called her Miss Hagstead. Instead, are talking about uh, how. Well, they, she's actually Miss Hagstead is talking about all of them, like shitting on about <laughs> all of them, but uh, talking about Theodore, how you know he's getting too big and we need to get rid of him. You know, we got to do He's something about it. the age him. of the desire, desirable age of adoption, I guess. Yeah. Then, I don't uh, know why she hates him so much. I mean, we don't well, really know, really. Um, I think we know. I was going to get your uh, feedback on that once we get to the end, what yeah. the secrets, I think, the secrets of yeah. ending are. But well, did you read the comic? I, um, yeah, they're pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty spot on, I guess, like you mentioned. It's, it's the same, the same gist minus just not having the butler in it. I did. I did get a chance to read it. Yeah, since it's such a kind of a short, short story. Yeah. Well. Uh, anyway, so he drops uh, apple because he was sneaking down to get food because he's always hungry. That's what you know. So uh, she right. starts yelling at him, and he's like, "In the middle of the night, you're not supposed to be eating." You know, whatever. So she yells at him, and she tells the other Mrs. Heather, Miss Heather, to take him upstairs. And uh, to, that she locks him in his room, which is exactly like the comic, pretty much identical. There's no difference at all. So Miss Heather's nice. She takes him up. Uh, Theodore asks Miss Heather, uh, "You guys were talking, telling secrets about me, weren't you?" And Miss Heather goes, "What we discuss at nights is uh, very private." And he goes, "Miss Heather, do you have to lock me in my room?" And she's like, "I don't make the rules, Teddy." Does he ask in the comic if he if they have to lock him in the room? Uh, there's a brief mention in the comic. Um, you get the little thought bubbles there, and this Theodore mentioned, yeah, but they just started treating him treating him bad, um, by locking him in the in his room when when he started the. Uh, I guess started acting up. Uh, well, whenever he would sneak out of his room at night because he would try to yeah. get food in the show and the and the. And, and that's also in the comic. He talks about how he was sneaking to get food or whatever. Uh, I do like how they... Mm -hmm. Was it this? Is it... I don't know if it's the first time or second time. I think it's this time. Did he eat the chicken and then he put it back in the uh, the empty... The bone? He put it back on the fucking yeah, plate like in that, the fridge? Yeah, that empty fridge. It had, oh, my it had God. A one piece of chicken chicken leg in there. and You know what I like? And then, as I, I used think to I do that. I saw onion and milk in there. I used to do that. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of this episode or what, but I would go and eat chicken wings whenever we had Chinese food, and I eat the chicken <laughs> wings and put it back in the bag. Of my mom would go, "What the hell is this?" But anyway, so they locked him in the room. Somehow he escaped at the middle of the night, and uh, the next day she goes, "Oh, he wasn't. Tobias wasn't in his room, and, or to, uh, the, uh, Theo, she calls him, was in his room." And she goes, "Oh, he'll be back. You know, he wanders off sometimes, and then he comes and he's all messed up." He's got like mud on his face and everything. You're like, what the hell happened to this kid? So then he comes in and you see him talking to one of the other kids that's smaller. And uh, he says a funny joke about, um, what was the joke? I know something about boogers. Uh, he said he, the kid next to him when they're washing dishes said, uh, what's the difference between uh, boogers and broccoli? Uh, uh -oh. The kids don't eat broccoli. Yeah, that was it. That was a cute little joke. That's a cute, that's a cute little, uh, I'm going to tell that to my, uh, my step <laughs> <laughs> That'd see be funny. Yeah, so um, they're cleaning dishes, and he has this hat that I always hated, and I guess it was popular back in the day. I never understood. Uh, it, is it that one with the tail? Or yeah, like the, the one that... Uh, the hatchet hat? I know it because mostly, I forgot what... Like, there was old 50s shows that kids would wear this stupid thing. I guess it was popular. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's wearing this as raccoon... I forgot what it's called. So I, it, I think it's a fox. It's actually foxtail. And it's a little nice touch, though, because he's—I don't think he's wearing that in the comic. I don't remember, but he's wearing a it Davy here, Crockett hat. That's and that is a little, deal, right? huh? Davy Crockett. Like that's Davy, what it is. Davy Crockett. Yes, hat. that's what it is. Uh, th this kid's wearing it in Back to the Future. Um, yeah. Lorraine's brother, uh, which is actually uh, Arnold from uh, the Wonder Years. So anyway, so he's the clean dishes, and then Mrs. Uh, Heather tell. Oh, and he is so big compared to the rest of the kids. <laughs> you don't realize, like they have him lined up to show yeah. you how big he is, and he and it's ridiculous because his clothes doesn't fit him either. So it, it is preposterous. So these people come to, uh, they're looking for a kid, and they said they're interested in him, and uh, and I guess but maybe that's because they probably try to push him out and say, yeah, well he's kind of old, and he goes, oh, they you know, whatever, and uh, so. 
they present to all the kids and and uh they want to take him they want to adopt him they want to adopt theodore and then like uh theodore's like i don't want to go but they're like listen theodore <laughs> like cover his mouth like shut the fuck up <laughs> you're not gonna ruin this <laughs> like you gotta get out of here and uh yeah, she wants his says out of there yeah and so then they're gonna adopt him and then she starts, she takes him to another room she says let me just talk to him for a minute and then she starts shaking him it's like you're not gonna ruin this and uh that's because earlier uh, Miss Heather asks Mrs. Hagstead, "What happened to my parent?" Uh, no, she asked. Uh, she asked about his parents. Like, where are his parents? She goes, "You must never say that." And that's when he dropped his apple, got caught. So then now, when she's shaking him, he's like, uh, "What happened to my like parents?" How the camera was shaking. Yeah, when she was doing it was. That. It was. Uh, <laughs> you know, for his her like uh, we were looking from his Sorry, point of POV. view. Yeah, and she was shaking. The camera was shaking. But so he asks, and she goes, um, "What did she say?" Or like in a car accident or something, right? Is that what she said? Yeah. I don't remember. But we know, like, uh, that's probably not how they died. And uh, Mrs. Hagstead probably yeah. knows exactly what happened to them. But I will say about this entire part is the lighting. I liked it when I was younger. I liked it, like, a few months ago when I rewatched this when I told you about this episode. And yeah. watching it now again yesterday, I was like, it's kind of, they kind of, I think they shot day for night. And they just put like that's a filter. Like. Yeah, they just put a filter over it, and that's kind of yeah. like first time director. I thought I, it didn't. It kind of, it kind of works as some, like at parts it works. Some scenes when they're walking in the woods, so it work pretty decently. And night, yes, but I um, think that was like evening. But then because then there's like times where you could tell it's day, maybe, it's clear as day. Maybe they, maybe uh, yeah, maybe they were only able to film in that area during the day so i guess they had to compensate with that filter that's what stood out to me the most is those scenes where they were, it was supposed to be at night but it, <clears throat> it looked a, a bit odd because they had that filter during mm -hmm. the day it clearly looked like it was in the day yeah could have been a stylistic choice it could have been uh they could have been limited on time uh, when they could record Who yeah knows? maybe but i would say i do th i but do it, like it added to it i think it, it's it does thing. see there are parts where it works and that's when the lighting is coming from outside into the house or into the in, orphanage into the into the house it looks cool yeah yeah, yeah. look and then Get even a little scene with the the dog barking yeah at him and you can see, see the, the blue light the light right behind them yeah so theodore it's comes good. to the house and it's a mansion it's a, bigger than any mansion i've actually I've seen a couple, and this is pretty fucking, eh. It's pretty enormous. I was about to say no, but then I'm like, I don't know. Because there are locations when I go scouting for doing paranormal investigation when I used to. I was looking at a bunch of different locations. And one, and it's funny, because one of them is called the Devil's Tree. And right around there is nothing, is just humongous houses. And there was a different location, the same similar Devil something is called. And it was, it was in Jersey. Uh, they were so big that I've never seen houses that big. Now, I'm talking about like that's that's what, and I used to live in a neighborhood with big houses, and I, mean, I had friends that lived in like nice parts of Long Island that's like very fancy rich people, and they actually had yeah. like a mansion with a west wing and an east wing, but it didn't look that big from the outside or even inside. But it was a it was a mansion, right? And then uh, this this is enormous. This is gigantic. So. Um, he goes in, it's like a museum, and uh, he starts touching things. He goes, don't touch that. That's like, you know, that's an ancient artifact you can't touch. And then this dog starts growling at him. I forgot the dog's name, but the dog doesn't like him for some reason. It seems like I don't think he likes people in general, it seems. But he starts... It was just this big vase that they were talking. He was about to touch. No, no, I mean, yeah, but the dog doesn't like uh, Tobias. And I, I was thinking, I don't think the dog likes any humans. <laughs> Um, I don't I know. Say, like, yeah. I mean, Tobias. I'm calling him Tobias because they're both Toby. Uh, but because uh, the kid's name's Toby and the butler's Toby. And the butler was been watching in the background. It's Larry Drake, the guy who played um, the serial killer Santa in the first episode. He ends season two, which is actually interesting. He started season one. He ended season two. So uh, that was that's fun. But uh, he sees his room, and his room is fucking enormous, and he's got toys all over. And the toys are, are it would fit him because he's. He hangs out with younger kids, which has to suck, right? If you're in an actual orphan, and you know what? I would say one thing: reading the comic, I was almost like I got really emotional reading the comic. Like the comic is worse than this than this episode. This episode's nice and fun, kind of, and there's some kind of harsh tones in it. But reading the comic is like I felt like I was there 
you know and i was i pictured everything i was seeing like oh fuck this kid's life is miserable yeah, I was, yeah i was a bit more grounded and uh not as uh mm, not not as upbeat as uh yeah because the theodore uh was pretty upbeat through everything even though uh yeah they weren't the greatest i guess the the, the, the what's it called the mrs hex that wasn't the greatest to him no but, but yeah going through that comic it, it seemed like he was going through a lot rougher shit yeah so he has all this toys and everything and when he wakes up in the morning tobias the butler brings him fucking cake and shit <laughs> yeah all they feed him is uh is sweets and, he's, and you know it felt like uh it's, it's something he, he would enjoy yeah kids like this it's like a home alone you know he ordered uh all those sweets in the hotel in home alone too yeah you know yes that's because kids would love that for a while but like, to, like, like toby says <laughs> yeah like toby says uh, uh later well his name's theodore i forgot but uh, teddy i'm calling him toby i guess i don't know what the fuck uh, the, the, uh, i wanted to mention that uh one of the the parents the uh, mrs uh colbert uh played by grace uh zabriskie she's she's been in uh known for uh, her work uh, on Twin Peaks so I thought I'd throw that in there she was uh, Laura Palmer's mom in Twin Peaks uh, yeah I was just gonna say um, that she looked very She's familiar but I don't know about if it was from Twin Peaks but I do know I know that face and I've seen her in a lot a lot of things funny enough she's still working yeah, she's in a lot of stuff yeah yeah she's still working but yes yeah, uh, she was in Seinfeld that's what it was she's in Seinfeld she was um, one of George's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Susan's, Susan's parents, one of Susan's parents. Mrs. Ross. I think, Susan, uh, I think that's, it was, yeah. That's his fiance's mother, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, she's uh, she's in a lot of things. I mean, you've probably seen her in something. I was, and the guy, too, uh, funny enough. I don't know. I, I thought he was kind of, mm, you know, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not terrible. But like doing too overacting, I think he was overacting the father, and I, I have seen the bit, father yeah. in things. At least I, he looks like a guy I've seen in other things before. Uh, it's particularly an uh, episode of Freddy's Nightmares. Uh, he was shit. in the yes, he was in the first episode. That's what it was. He was one of the guys that wanted to kill Freddy, and then the cop had to come and stop him from doing it. He was leading the fucking. The people to kill um to kill freddie so yeah those two oh, people okay. because we, we normally say that in the beginning it stars this but we didn't say this this time because we wanted to get into this episode and we've been having technical difficulties in the background but yeah so um the so his name's teddy i keep calling him to toby because toby is the name of the butler tobias larry drake but you don't know that till later until he says uh he he's he could be friends tobias the butler and tobias gets has a liking for the kid and uh he finds out that tobias also was an orphan both orphans. yeah they're both orphans and uh so he goes can i call you toby and he goes if you like right so he calls him toby so they play games and stuff and he goes uh why like i don't want to eat this anymore like <laughs> i'm tired of eating this shit. yes yeah, because like this yeah because this kid already was getting locked up in his room all day and uh he coasts into living with another family that mm -hmm. locks him in the room all day yeah while they claim to be going to work and all they feed him is a bunch of different uh sweets banana sweets. splits cherry pies all eclairs shit. oh my Milk, god milkshakes yeah <laughs> Exactly. Every, kids yeah. gotta have the diabetes already, and yeah, I know. And, and then, then they, there's another shot that we get or, uh, later on. Was so yeah, the ones that they're clearly outside, but they're like walking in the in the backyard or in the woods. Yeah, it was like the daytime mansion. Yeah, it looked kind of cool, but you could tell it's it was a, day for sure. It's too day, much bright daylight. Yeah, that's the problem. So I mean, that's why sometimes it's not great giving. I will say when they gave him a cake for his birthday, they said they gave him a birthday celebration. And uh, they came in overacting, which I think she did, she's a really good actress. So is uh, um, Larry Drake. I, the guy, I guess say, he was overacting. It felt like it, especially later on. But he, I don't know, his face looks like an actor. I've seen him do other things before, but I'm looking on his IMDb, and he uh, hasn't done anything. I, I mean, maybe <clears throat> besides yeah. the Freddy's Nightmares episode. That's probably the one where I recognize him so much because I'm recently watching those. 
So that's probably it. That's where I probably recognize him from. And I'm just thinking he's in a bunch of things when technically he's not. But um, yeah, so uh, William Frankfather, that's his name. William Frankfather plays he, Mr. Colbert. He played Colbert. a cop in Cool World. Oh, man, what a classic. Yeah, but I will only ask I was going to say. So they come in, they overact and sing happy birthday to him, and she does a great job, uh, Mrs. Colbert. Does a fantastic job sticking it. And then they give him a cake. They cut a slice of cake and they put it on a plate. A humongous slice. This cake looks <laughs> yeah. delicious. I was like, when they put the fork through the through the cake, it just like like butter. It just went straight in like nothing. I was like, oh my God. That looked great. Yeah, it, really, it was really good. And then he was gets, like. Uh, uh, gets to buy us a slice. Yes. And then this, I guess he was like, uh, he didn't want to eat. Right, and he goes, "Can uh, Toby?" Oh, he asks if Toby can have a piece. That's why they give mm -hmm. Tobias a slice. And then he's like, uh, "He's not feeling well because he's thinking about the kids in the orphanage that he likes and he misses." And Mrs. Heather, who's like a the nicest person in his life, besides the kids that his that they play together, you know, because Mrs. Hagstead yeah. was a bitch. <laughs> She was a bitch. That's, <laughs> but yes. That's why they changed the name in the comic. In the comic, yeah. like a hag. In the, in the comic, um, when they put him in, they like, moved to the house, it doesn't look like a mansion. But supposedly it's like a property very far away, whatever. They lock him in the room too, right away. And he assumes it's because they, to they told whatever secret he was trying to find out about him. And he's like, why can't I know about my secret? So that they said, oh, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, telling them, you'll find out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, uh, so he's it's very sad. That comic is very sad, actually. I, I don't know why I was so emotional. Maybe I'm on my period. <laughs> I don't know what that was like. Well, the difference is it didn't look like he had any toys or any cake to eat. Yeah. So it just looked like they just locked him in this empty room with a, probably a mattress on the floor. Yeah. yeah, a mattress on the floor. It looked like that was all in there. And then they, they'll come in and it looks like they just give him a some of the pictures piece were of sandwich. Kind of, some of the pictures were kind of weird. Like the way they had her standing, the mom, and then him shirtless. Yeah, you see, I was like, you what see the her fuck? legs. Yeah, I'm like, she's just standing on the foot of the bed. Yeah, like, and then she wakes him up while he's shirtless. And, and, and like, yeah, like, and he's shirtless. Let's I'm like, what easy. is this? <laughs> I was like, bro, what the fuck is these these th people right? So anyway, um, one night uh, while he's sleeping, uh, they unlock the door. He's awake. And uh, they go, oh, what a sweet boy. I don't think I could wait much longer, you know? And then uh, mm -hmm. he says, when we get home, we'll tell him our secret. And um, they close the door. The next day, or later, I guess, later that day, later that night, uh, Tobias comes in. He said, come on, we got to go. We got to get out of here. We got to get you out of here. Because <laughs> he became friends with him, with the kid. And he doesn't want to, he, and he doesn't want to hurt the kid. So then they go to, uh, he's like, what's going on? So they go to escape, and that's when uh, all of a sudden uh, Mr. and Mrs. Colbert are down there waiting for them. It, just, it, just, it looked like they just got a, came back from a Halloween party. Yes, <laughs> that's the other part they that all, was it so dressed up like, stupid. <laughs> just that stereotypical, well, we find out that they're vampires. Yes, that's what we find out. But they again, fanning them up with sweets. The lighting is fantastic. Uh, the, the, the mansion is yeah. great to film in. I don't know what this place is. I don't think it's actual mansion. I think this is like a fucking, like, Mar-a-Lago or something like, you know, like a big place where you go have weddings and shit <laughs> you know like a i don't know like a clubhouse or something you know like i i, I, I can explain it like uh when i had to paranormal investigate a, a location that used to be an insane asylum there were multiple buildings like this was a huge property and they had buildings for these people and kids and old people and women it was two towns till today two towns on two separate parts of this insane it used to be an insane asylum one part so a lot of the buildings are just run down and empty all right and then there's uh some other parts that the other town owns that they put just like the town hall is one of the buildings right another place is like the recreation center this is the one i investigated then further up is a golf course they turned one of them into a golf course Oh, you just yeah. I mean, me it's, a, it's exactly like you said. Um, this is where they go for weddings, photographies, private events. It's a oh, you see a, a big a big ma mansion in Beverly Hills. Yeah, called the uh, Greystone Mansion. There we go. Interesting. 
It's beautiful. It's fucking gorgeous. Like, uh, yeah, I was right. I thought so. It was like, there's no way this is a real house. <laughs> I was like, there's no fucking way. But anyway, they um, and they go through a list of a bunch of uh, movies that they sh that shot at shot uh -huh. at that place. The Prestige shot there. Spider Man mm. Three. Wow, the whole list here. Spider Man Three. Sorry, uh, my brain's trying to figure out what scene. It's uh, well, it's the penthouse. Um, it's uh, Harry Osborne's penthouse, I guess, is shot um, on the outside, and then out, and then on the Greenstone Mansion on the inside. I guess the inside of it. Then that would be when he comes and he sees the butler again. When he comes back after he got the concussion and he comes back home, and then he's bouncing the oh, basketball okay. in, the, in, the, in the house. I'm just thinking of my memory. Yeah. Damn, that's a big ass fucking place. It's beautiful though. Yeah, it's great. But so uh, yeah, so light coming into the house behind Mrs. Colbert looks fantastic. The light behind her hair, while she's standing there yes. with the makeup and the terrible teeth, I'm surprised <laughs> that how bad yeah. it is because there was an episode of Freddy's Nightmares with a girl that was a vampire and the teeth were great. I was like, holy shit, those teeth look good for 1990. By the way, like I said, I said this on Freddy's Nightmares. <laughs> this and Freddy's Nightmares was like season two of both, literally three months apart, I think. Freddy was in January, wow. it aired, and this was in the summer, June or something. This episode okay. actually aired, what, July 31st. So, January and July, and it's six months. It's exactly six months. I was just doing it off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I was just like, oh, God, the, the, these teeth look terrible. <laughs> I'm su really surprised. Uh, they look, they just look fake. So, anyway... Uh, she goes, what does she say to, to, to Tobias? She goes, well, 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 where do we think we're going or whatever, right? And he's like, uh, I can't go through with it. You know, well, she goes, oh, she goes, making off with the goods. Are we, Tobias? He's like, I, I, I can't go through with it. And he goes, what, you don't want everlasting life? That was the deal. Like, you know, like you right. you fatten this fuck up and take care of him while we sleep in the day. Yeah, it looks like they had some deal. Yeah, it, it would make him a vampire. Yeah, this is a fuck. I don't know how nobody has has made a move a full length movie about this in a, in some way, shape, or form, or adapted this, like extended it. Yeah, somehow. it's a cool idea. It would have been uh, cool to see this in um, feature film. Yeah, just like slowly, you know, slowly start getting hints that you know they're doing something. There's something nefarious going on with. You know these eccentric couple uh you know taking this kid from the orphanage and you feeding know, him sweets every day and it would have been a cool movie you know i i realized why i like this so much besides when i was a kid i loved werewolves more than vampires that's why people love mm -hmm. vampire i loved werewolves more always 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 i don't know why i don't have no idea why but i just always loved werewolves maybe teen wolf Maybe because I was in love with Michael J. Fox as a kid. I loved Michael. I was in love with him. Not in love with him like that. But, like, he was the coolest fucking guy in the world to me. I was like Marty McFly. I was a huge fan of that. I was. I had almost all of his films when I was a kid. So, right. Teen Wolf, I saw. And I loved it. I didn't know he hated that movie. So, I like Teen Wolf. I just love... I like The Howling. I like American Werewolf in, Par in London. Um... Then there's some shitty fucking movies, uh, werewolf movies. But I've always been into werewolves. So this, this was like, oh, I'm kind of spoiling it. <laughs> so let me just cut that part out. Snip, snip. <laughs> Take that part out. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So uh, she's like, uh, let the boy go, you know, because, uh, oh, she he tells her, like, let him go. Like, she goes, uh, we can't. His blood is so sweet or whatever. And then he's like, I don't know, Tobias puts a cross with his fingers. Like, that's going to do something. Yeah, that was random. And then the husband came out of nowhere and uh, took a big chunk out of Tobias. Yeah. 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 On his neck. And then uh, Theodore screams and he goes, no, Toby. <laughs> that, part so of, that part was like, oh, I feel bad. I know. And <laughs> he, made he jumps down. He made down. friends with the butler. That's like the first sign yeah, something's just... weird because he jumped down. That's pretty high. It looked like it was a high drop. And he jumped a, down. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he jumped down. Yeah, and he was like, didn't break his knees. He looked back up and he just ran as they were like, like, like doing the Drake's, overacting. Uh, yeah, hanging off, hanging off the the stairs. Yeah, and then uh, he breaks a vase, uh, one of their fancy vases. And this is the part where I thought it was oh, so yeah. ridiculous, where they jump off of the courtyard area, 
they must have had a trampoline and then some stunt people jumped out <laughs> and it uh, looks it looked kind of it was kind of cool actually but it looked kind of silly too you could tell yeah they, it looked like they jumped out of a trampoline they have like this uh under undershot of the uh, of both of them jumping and look like they're trying like they're trying to fly like yeah um, you know the well, it would, vampire in, the, style. in the script they would say angle up so like the camera up, is yeah. facing up and then you can see whatever's going on. It looked kind of it looked kind of cool. I saw I, I I dug what they were trying to do. Yeah, yeah. But it did look a but bit it silly. Yeah, ridiculous because of the costumes. Because what they're yeah, wearing. Yeah. Ugh. It, yeah, that's uh, that was the downside of it. It did, did look like they just got back from a costume party. Like, it's oh, the yeah, Bella Lugosi. They know they're vampires. Yeah. <laughs> they was dressed up yeah. like vampires. It's the Bella Lugosi Dracula like, shit. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, like real vampires. It wouldn't be dressed in like real, like stereotypical vampires. Yeah, I mean, literally, the guy has a fucking Bella Lugosi cape. He's, it's he's a got cape. the cape and the cowl. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like they sick the dog. The new Batman almost. They sick, sick the dog on on Theodore, and they go save some for me. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Is that like the dog's gonna attack him? Like, I don't know. I know what that means in that aspect, like, but like I was thinking, is the dog kind of, you know, is he like a special kind of dog? But then they catch him. They finally catch him at the end, and he says, "I know my secret now." And then uh, uh, he goes, uh, "Pretty good makeup." Pretty yes, good, he goes, uh, "I'm a werewolf." Yeah, he goes, uh, "And I have a hunger for vampires." And he just attacks the wife <laughs> and kills her, and then the that was good. Yeah, and this is the best shot when this he's running. All, this is all. This is the best shot. Yes, with the good use of the blue blue, blue, yes. blue light filter. Because it feels like you're watching that the werewolf great. Lon Chaney's the werewolf like black and white mm -hmm. the smoky fog behind it it was perfect yeah it was a great use of it yeah so then later that night so it, cuts, it cuts to black and yeah. then we come go back to the orphanage yes and uh there's a banging on the door and theodore's standing there dressed like a little nice pimp uh, like you know nice yeah, suit get those clothes from no the house they had it for him actually i don't know oh, right right they had clothes from yeah maybe know. Poor Tobias, though. Anyway, so he goes, I'm home. And she goes, oh, my God, you're back. And he goes, I know my secret, Mrs. Hagstead, and I think some things are going to change around here. And then he looks at her, and it was the worst shot ever. I'm like, what the... F but they did that because of, I think, Lon Chaney's fucking uh, the Wolfman. I'm pretty sure that's probably that part, why. Yeah. That part was rough. Yeah, that was rough. But uh, it was fantastic. I love this as she screams or whatever. But then, like, I don't know, Miss Heather gonna be cool with him being a werewolf? I don't know. Uh, why would he? Well, it seems like they may already already knew. Uh, that's well, what I was yes. wanted to ask you. What's what's the deal with Mrs. Hagstead? Uh, I guess. Um, I think she knows. Uh, who knows? Like, uh, I'm just trying to guess because I never really explained it. I'm. A, I guess she knew yes. that he was a vampire. I mean, a werewolf. I mean, and yes. she didn't want to deal with him, and somebody else would. No, no yeah. secret. I think uh, somehow, some way, maybe the cops or somebody in town, there are probably rumors about them. Who knows? And I, mean, I don't know if she knows werewolf necess but I think she does because when he made the face, I think she mm -hmm. was, she's, she got scared. Well, she was trying to get rid of him probably because he was sneaking out every night. They locked him in the room. She had to know he was a werewolf. In the comic, it makes it like seem like, yes, they know. Like yeah. oh, the comic, she's much worse in the comic than she is in this episode. In the comic, the woman's a fucking bitch. A real bitch. Because there's a part where he goes, when I kissed her goodbye, she looked revolted. So, like, I'm like, yeah, that means she, in the comic that she knew. So I'm pretty sure here they adapted it from that. She knew. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, she knew he was a werewolf. She wanted to get rid of him. And um, Miss Heather didn't know. So, you know. Yeah, I, little they, did they know, didn't know that the Colberts were vampires. Yes. Imagine she did know. That'd be fucked up. <laughs> right? That'd be more fucked up. No, nah, but she didn't know. That would be cool know. if uh, he, she, he just lunged at her and you know, that was the end of the episode. That would have been nice. Yeah. I feel some bad. Cool babe, some cool payback. I feel bad. I started the episode calling him uh, Toby, even though it was because of Larry Drake. <laughs> He's Theodore. Theo mm -hmm. or Teddy. So, but uh, yeah, I called him Toby or whatever. I, what's his name in the comic? Is it Teddy? Let me see. I don't remember. I think it still goes by Theodore in the comic. Mm. Theodore. I tried to read this on my phone one night and I couldn't yeah. do it. There's a kept pop up. Yeah, it's Theodore. Ah. 
the comic I like a lot. Uh, there's so many stories, you know. There's so many stories. They could definitely do another. You know, I'm kind of happy, right? You know, now we're at the last episode of this season. The next episode, maybe we'll talk about our rankings for the entire shows and what our favorite episodes were, and maybe look back at mm -hmm. you know the one that we didn't like, the one I was medicated on when I was talking about it. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 there's so I am happy, right, that M Night Shyamalan. Did oh, not get yeah. to remake because there was a, it was supposed to happen. There was a trailer for it, and M Night Shyamalan I'm was talking I about it. Yeah, I am too, actually. To be, but then again, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm happy because I'm, I'm like, ah, maybe when the season, when the series goes on and we get to the bad episodes, then we're gonna be like, uh, maybe he, it would have been okay if he would have came in. But I think it wouldn't have, and I don't think they would have gone to the actual comics. They wouldn't have gone to the comics. Yes. They would just make up their own sto lame story. Exactly. Too. Exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of good source material from the comics that you can just tweak or alter just enough to keep the core elements there and but they won't do that. They'll no. just uh they'll just write some write their own episodes. They write won't some even bullshit. reference the comics. Yeah. That's the problem. And I think that would it, the reason why I actually though I think the reason why they wouldn't go to the comics is probably cuz of rights something with the rights like they'd have to work with fuck there's the, i don't even know what the issue is now i'm gonna look it up seriously look into all the legal fucking problems between the rights why they can't because this show there's not a, it can't be on hbo hbo doesn't have the rights to it i guess because they can't put it on you know on the h on max you know warner brothers doesn't have the rights to it i don't know i don't yeah, know who they owns need to figure this. that shit out this thing needs to be uh streaming on something uh, ec comics either doesn't own i mean the, to the show so they might have a dispute with the rights on that i don't I mean, know we talked about it but i didn't pay attention too much i need a breakdown better of what what the issue is with this episode but um yeah i like this episode even with the problems with the with the shooting day for night which is you could tell but then again you look at it and you go well he was a production designer he wasn't actually a director so it would be worse if he was an actual director and he did that i think he wanted to try something interesting and cool and it works in some parts it does like the last shot was fucking phenomenal with him running as a werewolf yeah. it was great so um yeah i i i think i can't i really have nothing negative to say about it at all besides that that's the only that's the only negative what about you besides that besides that and then the them dressing like stereotypical yeah. uh, party city vampires that one well, the kid could have handled that a little bit better yeah um otherwise pretty solid episode i mean it was cool to get um larry drake back for an episode i thought he was one of the you know better actors they've gotten for uh, for the roles they played and uh and on the series itself you know we had a, a lot of great actors uh play different characters and it was cool to see him um return for the last episode of season two and then starting the first uh season so uh, it was good I'd say it was pretty solid. I don't have a whole lot to complain about with this one. It's pretty spot on with uh, the comic uh, in some elements. The, it captures the the gist of the story, and I would say, yeah, I'd say it's a solid four out of five for my rating there. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four out of five too. Surprisingly, I was thinking about going higher, and I'm like, I gotta be fair because I know I love this one from a kid, but like looking at it now as an adult. And actually not being, like, too biased. It's it's a 4 out of 5. It's still a good episode. It's not great, but I loved it as a kid. I, I would give it a 5 out of 5 if I was a kid. If it was little me, I'd be like, oh, I love But, uh, yeah, 4 out of 5. It's good. It's really good. The acting in general. And just the, the twist at the end. Like, that's the twist I'm talking about. Somebody said with the first episode of uh, that we did for the first podcast we did, they commented mm -hmm. recently. And I'm like, well... I'm sorry, because I don't know what we said. It has been like months since we, that episode went up. So I was like, oh, it has to, because it said there was a twist in the first episode, she said. And she said, I totally dis disagree with you guys on that. And I'm like, what was the twist that he was a, a fucking, that he got electrocuted? Did we talk about this on the last podcast? I know we talked about it, but I don't know if we actually talked about it on the podcast. But uh, I think um, we talked about it on the Patreon or uh locals uh, version of this no i don't think so <laughs> think we, might, uh, well, we just talked about it uh i cut it out but i think, think it might have got it got cut out yeah but yeah trying to remember but i don't remember there being a twist uh I, otherwise... no it was the twist was that he that they they outlawed using the electric chair 
Oh, that all oh, that one. Yeah. I was thinking of the Larry Drake episode. No, that one. The twist is that he got in the house, and the daughter is the one that let um, him in. I guess. I, don't know. I guess so. I guess you could consider it a twist, but um, it was a very, it was a forced twist. Yeah, you knew it was gonna happen or something like that. I said, uh, it was stupid. Anyway, this was a twist. This the twist that you didn't know he was gonna be a werewolf. At least I didn't. I mean, I, I no, I didn't. The first time I watched it, I didn't see it coming. But I know you kind of told me the description yeah. of it. But uh, I mean, just trying to go through it and watching it, it they did a good job at you know hiding that that twist. Uh, mm-hmm. It could have gone either way. I think I think most people would say the parents were vampires or some sort for sure. And but the twist of the or that they were gonna, being a werewolf. Yeah, uh, I think I don't think most people would would have guessed the first time. I don't know what they would have thought about the parent, like as a kid, as an adult watching this. Uh, they would have said, they, maybe they would have thought vampires, yeah, because this, why they making him so sweet? Why they make him eat all these sweets? Why they don't let him out? Like, what's going on? You know? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. it's, they're going to do something to this kid. They're going to eat him. They're going to eat him, most likely, they, people would think. But then the vampire thing, okay, interesting. But the twist is that he's a fucking, that, that was badass when I was a kid. I was like, oh, I was in love. And he does look like, uh, he looks like Michael J. Fox <laughs> as uh It did look like T Team Wolf. Yeah, uh, Teen Wolf. Neck up there. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I love Teen I love Wolf it. Four out of five. This is great. I think this is a great episode. Oh, it also stars um I don't know how to say her name. I'm not gonna say Mrs. Hag says name, but I've seen her in a lot of things before. Miss Heather is is Stella Hall. And uh I'm gonna try to see what she was in because I've seen her. Oh my god, she always plays a stewardess. <laughs> Got that stewardess face. What is that? She was a stewardess in Freddy's uh, uh, Freddy's Dead, Freddy's the Dead. Final Nightmare. That's the last <laughs> thing she did. The 3D one. And then she was a stewardess in Die Hard. She's not been in anything, but she looks so familiar. Besides, I guess because I've seen three of the movies that she's been in, <laughs> and this episode. That's probably why. I've seen Die Hard. I've seen yeah, Scrooge. She's got, she's got that face that she's been in a bunch of things. But yeah, not as much as we thought. And I've seen Fre- Freddie. So I've seen three. And there's four things out of her entire filmography is very small. I wanted to mention her because she's a very pretty uh, lady, and she was the most sympathetic. Other besides Theodore, she's the most sympathetic. And and Tobias, because you do feel for like Tobias when he tries to save the kid. You know, and you just go mm-hmm. oh, like. It was a good. I like this episode a lot. I think it could be adapted today. They could adapt it. I would say movie. that's really the only the only element in that uh, that story that they that wasn't in the original that I think um, added to it that at least gave yeah. you uh, something um, for Theodore to 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 care about or or at least bond with and then <laughs> and then gets bit right in the neck. Uh, yeah. As, uh, he tries to escape. When he tries to save him, you're like, "Oh, what's going on?" Like they, like he knows something's gonna happen when they go. We can't wait. And then Toby comes to save him, and you're like, "Oh shit!" You know, it was. It's it's a it's a great episode. You feel bad when he dies. It's great. It's so great how you could he could go from the first episode. He's a sick fucking serial killing psychopath Santa Claus killer, and then this one he's a butler and he's a nice guy and you feel bad for him. Isn't that crazy? That's fucking wild. But the same thing with Bill Sadler. That's acting, as <laughs> John Lovitz would say. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's great. So uh, that's it for season two. Uh, we might do a rankings and uh, one of the episodes where we rank our favorite episodes of. Uh, of season two and talk about them briefly and then uh we're off to season three so we will see you guys next time when we do that again you can check out our merch at um ghostcrusadersmerch.com um you can follow us on x at uh, creeps of crypt you can look us up there and you can stream us anywhere you think about <laughs> you can stream us anywhere uh, we're on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey. We're all over the place. So, um, yeah, check us out there. And anything you want to plug? Yeah, you can check me out on X slash Twitter uh, under Splinter47. Um, you can check me out there. And, yeah, I look forward to the, doing the next one. We'll be we'll talk about uh, Love to Death is the next one, the first episode of Season 3. Yeah, I actually watched it the other day, too. But I don't want to spoil anything, so we will talk to you guys about that episode soon. So anyway, yeah, we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.